Good evening. I might be a minute early. Uh, forgive me. I realize my phone is almost dead and I don't have a charger up here for some reason. Uh, so I thought I'd go on and start it and make sure that I have time to, to say everything I wanted to say today. I uh, hope everybody's having a great week. It's uh, this weather's kind of crazy here, isn't it? It's a beautiful day, and then it's 29. No, it's not quite that cold, I don't think, at night, but it sure feels awful cold out there at night. Uh, but hope you've been having a good week, though, and uh, we've had a great Sunday. More people at Sunday services, more people showing up for our Sunday evening services. So hopefully things are starting to move back. Uh, we got our potlucks going again, finally. Uh, so we got potluck Sunday coming up. So if if you're close enough and you want to come worship with us Sunday morning and come to Potluck, we'd love to have you. Uh, I'm actually going to talk about something I talked with uh, the others at our elder minister meeting this morning about. Uh, just been stuck in my head all day. Uh, it's one of those things that when I saw it, I immediately said to myself, that'll preach. Uh, and that's what I told the elders too. So I decided to preach it. Uh, I had saw this interesting thing. I promise this isn't, isn't going to be a political lesson tonight. But uh, I saw a, a thing on the internet this morning that was talking about how authorities were blocking uh, fueling stations because of this big truck, it, or this truck uh, um, convoy that's going on in Canada right now. And so they're trying to block it so they couldn't refuel. So it said hundreds of people have come out to support the truckers carrying gas cans. And it shows them, you know, one in each hand. Some have little ones. Some have two. One guy had two big five-gallon uh, fuel. T but they were awful light looking. And the thing said, and some of them even had fuel in it. <laughs> and, and I thought, no, wait a minute. How am I supporting these truckers by taking empty fuel cans because they can't get fuel at the gas station? And I thought, you know, isn't that what empty religion is about. A lot of people tell you, I believe in Jesus, but there's absolutely nothing in their fuel tank. Nothing to show they're actually invested. Nothing to show that they're committed or, or performing what Christ performed to try and live up to that standard. And so here, what kind of help are you if you know I'm out of gas and you bring me empty gas cans? Uh, in fact, all you're probably going to do is irritate me. Uh, so what we're going to look at is a little bit of, of empty religion tonight. That's the theme. Uh, Matthew 23, 25 to 26, it says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first cleanse the inside of the cup and dish, that the outside of them may be clean also. So, so here Jesus is recognized. You know, you're, you're putting on a show, but when we actually look at what's inside of you, it's a mess. It's corrupt. It's filthy. And how many of us are like that? We, we come to church, we smile, but ultimately we know deep inside we're actually a mess. And, and it's not that we're even giving God a chance to fix it. We just come to church because we're supposed to. But when it comes to actually participating and, and adding fuel to that spiritual fire, um, our tanks are empty. Uh, Matthew 17, or, or pardon me, 15, verse 7 through 8, it says, Hypocrites, well, did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. So that was the first scripture I thought about with these tanks, was you're showing up and, and you're, you're acting like you're on my side. You're saying that you're on my side, but your gas can is empty. How are you on my side? You're not helping this. And that's the thing, the, the two five-gallon buckets at this one, I've carried five-gallon buckets full of water before for campfires and all of this, you know, put them out. And even my size, you know if you're carrying two five-gallon buckets of water. His were empty. But he sure looked good with these brand-new red bottles and this label still on them and, you know, showing his devotion. Uh, or was he? Or was, maybe just wanted to be on TV. I don't know. But that's the question, right? What is the difference between real Religion, true religion, people that are practicing their faith and those that are just empty. If you go over to Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 to 7, Ephesians 5, 1 to 7, uh, it says this. It says, therefore, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanliness or, or covetousness, 
Let it not even be named among you as it is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, or covetous man who is an idolater has an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. Now, on the other side of this, or not the other side, but also part of this thing is who we're listening to. You know, if if you got somebody saying, oh, I got something valuable for you, and they handed you your, your spiritual jug of fuel, and you realize there's nothing in it, what have we done? Well, there's a lot of people out there telling people how to be spiritual and holy and what they think God wants. And the reality is there's no biblical uh reference to it or even worse there is and the bible says don't do it but somebody's telling you you can be acceptable in the eyes of god and that's what we're warned about you be careful because we're not supposed to associate with all those evil things and yet the world today is telling us that god is love so he accepts us for who we are and we can pretty much do whatever we want and still be okay but it's a lie it's it's a it's a fake uh piece of news that is trying to motivate you for the wrong kind of living. And we need to remember that we are supposed to be this pure example of what Christ is for the rest of the world to see. So we can't afford to listen to people with empty words, false promises. And so we have to be very careful of who we listen to. In Colossians 2.8, it says, Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the traditions of men according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Now, I want you all to pay attention to this, because this is the modern-day uh, lie. This is it, right? God understands that the times have changed. Did you see what it said? Not according to the basic principles of the world, not according to, to what Christ has told us to do. They're doing things according to what mankind has deemed is sufficient. And then they tell the church that we should accommodate them, that we should change to, to fit the, the world today. No, we should not. Christianity has never been about accommodating worldliness. It's about accommodating godliness, which is normally contrary to what the world preaches. Colossians 2, 20 to 23 says, Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to regulations? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with the using according to the commandments and doctrines of men. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but are no value against the indulgence of the flesh. There, there's this thing, see, the rationale sounds good at the time. And the world, boy, Satan knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing when he starts rationalizing wickedness to Christians. It's called peer pressure, right? It's peer pressure for a reason. When you have a hundred people looking at you going, but we really think this should be okay. How long does it take before somebody gives in and says, hey, maybe you're right. God is love. We should be able to do this. God should love us no matter how. But see, that's the problem. It sounds like wisdom, but it's a lie. It sounds like godliness, but it's not. It's serving the flesh and people's desire for wickedness and not wanting us to make them feel bad about it. First Peter uh, 4, 7 to 10, it, it talks about our gifts. Our gifts, you know, we, we all have spiritual gifts. We have this ability to do something, whether it be preaching or song leading, whether it be uh, talking or visiting people in the in the nursing homes or hospitals, whether it be sewing teddy bears. You've heard me talk about this some, but, that, you know, we all have some sort of spiritual gift or gifts, plural. But what are we doing with them? First Peter 4, 7 says, but the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. See, I can take that and I can put it with the other stuff of sin and make sinfulness. Well, see, I'm supposed to love everybody. But look what it says. It says, be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. 
Now, for us to really understand the love of God and the grace of God, we have to also understand that God never wanted his people to be evil and wicked in what they practice. So I don't get to use the love of God as an excuse for me to love evil. I don't get to use the grace of God to excuse uh, the wickedness of man. When people want to stay evil and they want to stay worldly, they're not worried about God. They're worried about you making them feel bad about it. And that's why they push and push the way they do. Go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 to 31. It says, Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. And God has appointed these in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers. After that, miracles and gifts of healing, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the best gifts. And yet, I show you a more excellent way. See, Paul talked about spiritual gifts, and he has this, and, and you'll see two chapters from here. He will actually discuss uh, speaking in tongues in chapter 14, but we're in chapter 12. And the lead-in from chapter 12 that goes to chapter 13, you should know what 1 Corinthians 13 is about, right? This is what he says right after that, and I sh yet I show you a more perfect or more excellent way. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels... But have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, it is not provoked. Think, oh, sorry, lost my place. Is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And I love this part, love never fails. But what, whether... There are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. Now, we're not going to get into a spiritual gift discussion tonight. But what I do want you to see is that love is the answer to Christianity. Interpreting what love is, is the answer to true Christianity. Because if I want to show my love for somebody as a Christian, then that love is defined by how I can draw you closer to God. Period. It's not about making you happy. It's not about making you feel good about yourself. It's not about telling you that all of your dreams will come true uh, because God wants you to be blessed. If I truly love you, it is to tell you the reality of what it takes to have a relationship with God so that one day, we will have all our dreams come true. We will have access to heaven. We will have this, this beautiful relationship with the Father and Son in heaven. And, and we will get all. But the reality of Christianity is God does not like sin. He hates it. God does not want his people to go around demonstrating their grace and mercy by being wicked and evil. God does not justify sin. And he doesn't want us doing that. There is a point of rules for Christianity that we are expected to abide. You can say we, there is no law. That's not true. There, there are definite commandments even under the new covenant because Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So we have an expectation to show the love of God, the true love of God to everyone we encounter. If we're going to give of ourselves, make sure your fuel tank is full. Let them see the beauty that comes with people that love them, people that truly love them and care about their souls. We have a serious problem facing all of the churches today, and that is the fact that too many are eager to please people rather than eager to please God. If we justify sin, if we justify wickedness, if we excuse immorality, God is not calling us his. So I want to encourage you, Watch out for empty religion. 
Watch out for the people that claim they're helping you, but inside their tank is empty. They're just there to, to leave you stranded. Make sure that you're paying attention to the word of God so that you are drawing not just yourself closer to him, but you're drawing others to him as well. Time is short, y'all. We have to make sure that we are paying attention to what it takes to truly be called children of God. And that means we better pay attention to what the word says and we better stop paying attention to what worldly evil people say. All right, uh, a lot going on. I appreciate you joining me. I know not everybody's here now, but I hope that this will bless you throughout your, this week if you listen to it. And uh, I know that there are a few things going on with, with some Lyle came out of surgery very well. He's recuperating, but pray for him. Uh, I don't have the names with me. I know Carolyn had a, a, another death notice this week. Uh, it seems like our congregation and his families are getting hit pretty hard lately. So keep all of those who are mourning uh, in your thoughts, your prayers. Uh, Bobby Joe and, and Ed, uh, Eddie, uh, from Eddie passing, you know, think of them. Hutchings, uh, Dorothy Hutchins' family lost her. See, it's just been a, a lot going on lately. So keep your prayers going. Remember all of those in our congregation that are struggling with, with illness and surgery still coming up. And let's just be drawn closer to one another. So let's pray. Dear God and Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this time that you've given us to worship you, to praise you. Father, we thank you for this chance to study your word. And <clears throat> we thank you for your son who died on the cross so that we might be part of the family, that we might have a home in heaven someday, that we have a reason to celebrate. Father, we just pray that you will you will make us deaf to to ignorant people. Help us to realize where the danger is so that we can go the other direction. Father, we ask that you protect us, guide us, and always show us your way. We love you so much. We pray all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Love you guys. Uh, Carolyn, just see her down there. Hope you're feeling better, Carolyn. Uh, just need some healing going around on everybody, don't we? Love you guys. Have a great week. Hope to see you all Sunday.